Okay, uh, I think that now we are slowly coming to 300, so we can we can start also respecting those who were on time. Um, so Adika, you can start now the recording if you want. This is okay. 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 So thank you, thank you very much, Barbara and Jacopo, for being with us. Um, you have been among the most popular. Uh, intervention on our conference. We are organizing conference all over the week, but uh, the ones with you seems to be uh, on the top of the list on the interest of our colleagues all over the institution. Uh, is also, I would say, not an historical moment, but it's something something new uh, because it's a, it's the first time that you're someone organize a meeting with a journalist uh, on something that is a uh, the, the, the the policy today and what is going on for the top jobs that everyone is discussing about. The, the aim of the of the conference is not to go for a political debate and not to put forward uh, each and every political opinion that a member of the staff can have. Here is more a question of, of information, discussion about what is going on, different scenarios, outlook of the of the situation. Uh, I got before the meeting several questions from the colleagues that I want uh, to start to share with you again. Um, first, as a civil servant, we are always really concerned about the fact that the commission can be, or the credibility, reputation, and the strength of the commission could be undermined by this negotiation, that we will have more power on the member states and less on the commission. Uh, because for us it's crucial to have uh, uh, the Commission uh, fully fledged as an institution, not just to become uh, what is the nightmare of each and every servant, uh, civil servant, the Secretariat of the Member States. Uh, is what the Member States want, <laughs> it's not what we want. Um, the second concern that we, we share is that uh, the outcome of the European election uh, is clear in favour of sort of discontinuity whatever we could consider uh, to be the assessment of this message. Uh, and then the question is how we could cope with this request of discontinuity, having at the end of the story, the same majority, more or less in the parliament, and eventually the same candidate for the presidents of the commission. So what can be presented as a novelty on news, uh, if we want to, to be sensitive to this request of discontinuity. Uh, another item that has been spotted uh, reading uh, several articles, your articles are on top of our list, uh, is this approach of having a more powerful vice president that could be partly uh, an answer to this continuity. Uh, so sort of a security council uh, that will have uh, um, more uh, governance of the system. Uh, I imagine that the other commissioners, other member states would not be so in favor of this approach. Um, for the staff, the experience of the vice president has been sometimes positive, sometimes not. Uh, some of vice presidents seem to be really active in charge, some others a bit less. Uh, but it's clear that for the the day by day life of the services to have a, a vice president on top a commissioner means to have a second step a second cabinet to be convinced a seven uh, another uh, file to be prepared so sometimes the added value of this structure is not directly evident and finally uh, it seems to be a sort of dilemma between the scenario everything will be settled down uh, end of the month in the council uh, mid of july in the parliament and the others outlook that seems to go more for uh, perhaps uh, nothing can be uh, agreed before summer and we go eventually to september uh, linked to the situation especially in france with elections of course uh, and eventually also on the results in germany we all know that germany and france has a a strong role uh, for for some too strong or for some not but i mean it depends how you assess <laughs> the leading countries so the, the floor is yours uh, colleagues are uh, invited to to put question on the chat uh, uh, Jacopo and barbara have access to the chat in any case we are here in order to share with uh, the question raised 
Uh, and again, thank you very much for, for being with us. I, I already mentioned before that uh, during the, the meeting that we can have uh, in the services, sometimes uh, when a file is not that good, when we are afraid of any reputational risk, uh, the standard question is, uh, let's imagine that this file will be published by Politico. And everyone we start panicking and sometimes the good sense come back <laughs> around the table. <laughs> so I, I I want to 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 thank you again for your role. Uh, you have been called to be the 28th commissioner. Uh, perhaps uh, is helpful to have this uh, uh, controlled by by the press because I mean we all are accountable to our civil uh, citizen that pay our salary at the end of the story. So we need to be respectful for the taxpayer. <laughs> Thank you very much. The floor is yours. So, no, uh, thank you. Thank you for having us. Uh, uh, the point that you just uh, mentioned are the same points that are basically discussed in town in these days and these weeks. And uh, uh, the point of discontinuity, there is, for example, uh, one member state that has been obsessed with it uh, for months uh, and uh, uh, phrasing the question in terms of uh, whether this continuity will just be a matter of uh, policy making or a matter of uh, uh, changing the personnel and uh, uh, um, so for the time being uh, the, the answer seems uh, mixed uh, uh, because for the time being we have uh, 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 the name of uh, from the line remains there and the discontinuity seems more to be on the second layer of uh, vice presidents but uh, uh, um, but just an introduction remark to, to, to say that again uh, all the points that you have raised uh, have uh, uh, make uh, 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 match exactly with the discussion also uh, uh, in town with uh, uh, diplomats of the council uh, not, and not only with officials. So uh, uh, for uh, for once there is something uh, matching and these are exactly the the the, uh, uh, the questions about it. Of course. Also, the longer it takes, the more complicated it can get. But here I would uh, ask uh, uh, Barbara to, to step in because it's exactly something we are working on. Um, yeah, first of all, thank you for having us. Obviously, um, we uh, we appreciate the, the interest um, and obviously very happy to take questions and maybe afterwards don't hesitate to, to reach out to uh, discuss all the things that you disagreed on with us over, uh, over coffee. Um, maybe first on, uh, on the next days uh, leading up to the next European Council and what that would mean for the Commission leadership. Um, so, as I think, as everyone in this town, we're pretty surprised. Um, by what happened on Monday and what the EPP did in terms of strategy and how that played out. Um, what we see now is still, you know, overall a big optimism that the top job package, as there is, sails through next week, given, you know, certain concessions from leaders um, or from uh, from von der Leyen towards, towards leaders. But obviously, the longer it takes, the more people begin to start questioning and begin to start asking for more in terms of concessions. And so increasingly in our conversations with, um, with diplomats, with officials, uh, it is not ruled out that something will happen and that potentially even, you know, uh, a front um, mandate could become undermined. But these are all big ifs, obviously, and we still, uh, a week is a long time in politics, so we still have a, a way to go until until next week. So that's kind of, I think, the, the assessment of where we are now. Um, we, you know, in town, it was often said that the European Council would be relatively easy and then the European Parliament would be harder. I think what we're seeing now is the two become more and more intertwined, um, given the role of the political families play in the European Council, the way that they also did these negotiations on Monday between the political negotiators of the political families. Um, so that could have an impact also on uh, the vote in the European Parliament, especially if SND feels um, very uh, confronted or upset by what the what EPP did on on Monday. So maybe that um, as an introduction to top jobs, and before we move on to uh, the executive vice president, maybe I can just say one more word on that on the structure of the commission. Um, this was often very often talked about before the European elections, right? Um, what worked right now? What could be better in the next mandate? And I think there was a clear indication from 
you know, the, the current commission president and her team that it has to be more efficient and that in an ideal world, you didn't have all these layers, that it would be much better in terms of governance, much more efficient um, to, to even just cut out the layer, uh, whether it's EVPs and commissioners or just VPs and commissioners, but you know, have less layers. Um, at the same time, I think everyone also acknowledged that in the negotiations that are going on right now between uh, with the different leaders and what they want in terms of securing the support for front line, obviously it's very it comes very easy to throw in another VP position or, or to um, to haggle over that in order to get the overall compromise. And then of course we have the question of Maloney and her ECR and what her powerful hand uh, in these negotiations mean in terms of uh, getting an ECR VP or even uh, EVP in the in the next commission. And if I can add a layer to the, this last point, uh, uh, one of the questions since uh, Tuesday morning at least has been uh, uh, um, why then the APP has uh, uh, raised the stake in, in that way? Because the, the reasoning behind it uh, uh, makes sense because in uh, in two and a half years, uh, the APP that has uh, 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 the task gain uh, 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 14 uh, uh, seats. Uh, it will be left with just one top job at the commission. So I, the, 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 the reasoning of Plenkovich in the room makes sense, but at the same time makes sense also the reasoning uh, of uh, 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 the socialist, which is, uh, sorry, we, we, get, we get this job for the first time and uh, but we get just half of this job. But uh, this has opened uh, uh, an entire question on uh, why then the APP is making uh, in, with the move like this more difficult to actually reach an agreement quickly? And, uh, and so the speculations are uh, between those who say that uh, it was uh, done willingly and those saying that, that it wasn't such uh, 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 the, that uh, 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 because the, 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 the consequence is that this helps uh, ends up helping uh, those who need more time and those who need more time are especially is especially Meloni. Uh, Meloni is uh, uh, four seats away from Renew and uh, 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 and uh, uh, and we can imagine what happens if uh, in the next days and weeks uh, they reach the same level of MEPs. So again the question is uh, uh, by doing the, with, with this move, uh, the APP has made things uh, 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 more complicated, but uh, those gaining from uh, uh, longer time are people like uh, uh, Meloni, and at the same time, the other allies uh, could get more and more irritated, and uh, as we know, the vote in the European Parliament is a secret vote. Mm. And uh, Yeah, maybe just to add on the timing, because you also specifically asked um, on that, I mean, on on the record and you know the general consensus is still you know we aim for a deal uh, next week at the european council then we have the parliament vote mid july with the arguments that you know very well you know europe cannot afford a summer of political instability uh, given the geopolitical situation we need a quick uh, consensus so that the next uh, european commission can be installed as as quickly as possible um i think that as we said earlier, we hear more and more nervousness about that scenario and also about the timing, because obviously, if we don't have a deal at the next European Council, then we are, um, you know, just days away from the French election, which you also mentioned, which could also, even though obviously, given the constitutional system in France does not have a direct impact on the European Council in the power dynamics between leaders and in the overall sentiment of where Europe is heading already given the results of the European Parliament election, given Maloney seat at the table, if then the French far right wins at these French um, elections that hasn't, that will have an influence subconsciously on the debate in the European Council. So if we don't have a deal um, next week, then, um, then we'll, we're in a very, very different uh, situation. And that will obviously also have a an influence on the timing in the European Parliament. I mean, thank you. Thank you very much for this explanation. I, I meanwhile got a question. Um, is it sane for the credibility of the institution to take decision a few days before the election in such a big country as France? Would that have been easier and more reasonable and more respectful? Uh, I mean, it depends how you wish the result be. Uh, 
but this idea of having uh, the agreement in the council two days before uh, the election in such a big country as France uh, seems to be a novelty and uh, anyone around in town has already raised this uh, concern. Uh, perhaps not Mr. Macron himself, but the others <laughs> would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, listen, uh, you know that this is exactly what the 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 the, the right hand man of uh, uh, Meloni uh, said in an interview last week, and uh, so this is a point that the Meloni people have been pushing on the records. Uh, it makes no sense to have a decision like this. Then at the council level, you hear people saying, "Sorry, but we can't uh, every time wait for elections. There is always an election." But uh, uh, um, but again, the fact that that we are that uh, we are in a situation where we are wondering exactly the same thing that that uh, the Meloni people were wondering uh, uh, on the records last week uh, uh, gives already another indication of uh, how the the, the 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 different balance of powers uh, can be uh, shifting uh, the the longer it takes uh, for uh, this agreement. Mm. What do you think? Um, yeah, I'll maybe also take the question in the chat on, on the EPP's uh, negotiating strategy. And um, I mean, we have spent a lot of time in the last few days thinking about what made the and talking about um, with with um, with sources and, and EPP officials about, you know, why did they do this and what was the ultimate goal? Right? Because the idea that you would really split up the European Council mandate into and, for example, give it to Plankovic in the next mandate. I mean, I think everyone knew that that was too far fetched. So it seemed like a, you know, proper negotiation trick. You know, you aim high to get something more. Um, and a lot of options have have been circulating on that, for example, getting the full term in the European Parliament, um, getting more in terms of portfolios um, for certain commissioners or certain countries, um, also weighing on certain policies. I don't know if you've heard other theories. Those are kind of the main ones, I think, at this point. Um, but, um, and, and there is, you know, the, the feeling from, from the EPP of, you know, we, as Jacopo said, you know, we'll end up with not enough in the second half of the mandate. But also, if you look at the composition of the European Council, where you will potentially maybe have, you know, another German chancellor from EPP is the argument that they make, maybe even Spain, etc. So, like, e their argument is EPP will only become stronger at the European Council, but it won't be reflected in the second half of the mandate. You know, you can make that case, but the question is, of course, in these negotiation tactics, how far do you go and how much do you push before the other one just says, you know, um, I don't know if we can swear in this thing. <laughs> before the other one says we're leaving the negotiating table. Um, yeah. I think that that uh, was was very interesting to see on Monday that they they might have pushed too far and that now that risks blowing up in their in their face. But I think that it's pretty clear in this moment that there is a lot of theater. Uh, there is a lot of posture in this moment, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, uh, while this, the key players are keeping the cards close to their chest, but so I think we are uh, more in the uh, uh, theater moment than uh, uh, I mean. One of the reasons why I love politics is because it's a continuation of theater with other means. <laughs> 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 it's, uh, and we are there in this moment. It's, uh, more theater than. Until it become a farce, <laughs> we hope that is not. No. Uh, um, another question. I mean, colleague, uh, uh, feel free to put uh, the question in the chat. But I, I also got directly question to my to my mobile. Uh, another question is, uh, um, what do you expect to be uh, the decision of few tens of uh, MEPs that are not directly linked to any group? So these three. Uh, MEPs uh, could eventually uh, become uh, an important variable in getting the majority, and do we know more or less if they have already have the, an intention? Because uh, uh, everyone is expecting at least of, uh, ten or fifteen percent of uh, frontier uh, whenever they come to vote. <laughs> some speculation are already there. Some a component of the group has already announced that they are not supporting, for example, the candidate. So it's not something totally public. Uh, so I know that is impossible to guess, but what you, do you consider to be the safe side coming to to the vote the parliament, so which is the the majority? Of, of how many MEPs on top of the of the majority do you think can be a, a secure scenario for for the candidate for for the for our president? Um, 
maybe just to take a step back from the question, we throughout the campaign or you know the campaign, um, we spend a lot of time discussing, uh, you know, whether if Underline would get a second term, whether she would go to the Greens or to ECR, right? And um, what that could potentially mean. Um, at this point. The first strategy see, still seems to be just to have like the three centrist parties, right? And making them bigger. Um, and, you know, as uh, the Secretary General of DPP on the record said, like just to kind of whip those votes and make sure that they that they secure those votes. Um, at this, and just to go back to the EPP strategy for Monday, in terms of securing the SND vote, that didn't really look very helpful. So that might, <laughs> might have to be some damage control to be done there. Um, in terms of the other non-aligned MEPs that you're asking about, I would know less. I, maybe you have better. It's uh, 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 of course that's a big part of uh, the battle in the next days and weeks. Uh, is, uh, but at the same time, uh, even if uh, 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 AfD now can rejoin ID, this won't change much. Uh, uh, and uh, for, Melo uh, for Meloni. Uh, 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 the, to, to grow a group, uh, uh, the main option seem to be uh, uh, both uh, uh, very complicated and uh, and not uh, um, and not uh, uh, and not so much linked to those not aligned, but to uh, uh, um, Le Pen and Fidesz. A, a very complicated because of the geopolitical implications, and uh, uh, because of course uh, half of her party is. Uh, is uh, is represented by Matteo Smolivetsky in Poland, and uh, and so uh, uh, it's complicated to have uh, parties there that are not uh, uh, fully in line uh, over the war uh, in Ukraine, and uh, um, uh, uh, so the, the focus uh, for her seems to be more on these uh, two parties, uh, and uh, uh, and uh, and only some of the not aligned. A, a big chunk of them are IFD, and so they are meant to pro probably they will go back to, to to ID. It's uh, 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 but uh, uh, um, but the, 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 this geopolitical implication is one of the reasons why uh, uh, even if uh, even if uh, uh, Meloni and DCR manage to reach the Liberals in terms of uh, uh, of uh, or, or even to overtake them in terms of. Uh, of MEPs, then uh, the expectation is that they will use that to push more to have a heavy portfolio among the four vice presidents, executive vice presidents of the commission, rather than for HRBP, uh, exactly because of these uh, uh, possible geopolitical troubles, and because uh, the the Meloni people often are pretty clear that. Uh, uh, there is a commissioner and commissioner, meaning not all commissioners are equals, and uh, and uh, and uh, uh, and uh, a, a, a big uh, a, a, a way to 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 fully understand the grasp to fully grasp the 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 the, the, the balance uh, 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 the, the 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 balance shift will be uh, exactly how heavy will be the portfolio for a, a, an ECR uh, a vice president. I don't know whether we answered the question. Sure, sure, sure. No, no, I, it, it was quite clear. Uh, uh, you see in the chat a question uh, raised by Michaela. Um, you must understand that a lot of our colleagues have been working very, very hard on Green Deal, uh, on all the policies, sustainability, uh, really convinced. I mean, the colleagues on the G environment have been working hours and hours. I mean, it was um, under the, the vice president Timmermans, he was also quite convinced about it. Um, so now everyone seems to be afraid that uh, the victim of this political game would be the Green Deal, uh, sustainability policies uh, that are now presented to be the opposite of competitiveness and uh, so, uh, M Michele is asking, is there any possibility uh, that uh, sustainable competitiveness and competitive sustainability vice president will be merged? <laughs> <laughs> the best of the two words, actually. <laughs> exactly. It's a good one. Um, I think maybe two things. Um, in terms of the portfolios, um, you know, obviously if at this point for us, it's it's too soon. You see that there was a lot of discussion before the election on how can we make the 
potential shuff reshuffling the DGs or reshuffling the portfolios, what would be better, more efficient? There were a lot of discussions on that. Um, you know, that will ha that's happening now as well with the in the talks with leaders, but it's not that we already know much coming out of that to be completely transparent. Um, in terms of the, the Green Deal, um, I mean, we heard a lot of this nervousness, obviously, also from um, within commission staff and and certain member states and uh, you know the proponents of the of the green deal um at the same time what i've also heard a lot is that if funderline stays with the current platform the tree centrist parties yes there, you know there's a push from within the epp and waiver for example on combustion engine to to do certain things but overall, the Green Deal will stand. Um, we will just talk about it differently, right? We will talk about how to make Europe more competitive and how the green transition can work in that. But the policies as such and even, you know, the things that still have to be done, not just for 2030, but also for 2020, 2040 and 2050, um, that in the end, that will happen just with a different uh, rhetoric on top of it. Um, from within the negotiations, we have not heard that much about it, except uh, what Weber said on the record on the combustion engine. Um, so I'm afraid that at this point, we don't have much more answers uh, than than you guys do. Yeah, I mean, the, 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 here there are, two, there are just two points that can be added. One is that, that uh, uh, of course, uh, for um, for Meloni, uh, any uh, watering down of the Green Deal uh, would be uh, uh, another sign of her strength. Uh, and so uh, 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 there is a clear, you, 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 you remember how Timmermans became uh, the symbol for uh, that part uh, of the right, uh, the, 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 the man to defeat. And this remains as such. And, uh, um, and so uh, uh, any new role, uh, any enhanced role of uh, the Meloni component of ECR will no doubt pass from uh, a, 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 a watering down of that. But at the same time, this is linked to something that is uh, apparently not linked, but also linked, which is uh, a, 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 a which role, uh, uh, who will be the new uh, 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 commissioner in charge of uh, the liberal credo, uh, uh, meaning that now we have uh, the, the Danes uh, and uh, uh, and the things much more interested in in the geopolitical aspects, and uh, uh, the Dutch not as strong as before. There are jokes in town that this time they get multilingual, and uh, uh, and uh, and so who uh, and uh, uh, and Fredericks herself uh, uh, has a very different line. For example, in Denmark, from what was the line of Stagger. So uh, since at the same time we hear the the, the, the French more interested in competition and the Italians on uh, industry and the demonic that could be linked to defense, we hear all these kind of things. We it's still very unclear who will be the counterbalance, uh, and so uh, uh, and, the, and, the, and the two things are related because the more there will be something left of the Green Deal, the more the ECR will need a, a counterbalance, and the more there is this. Uh, 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 this idea that uh, the French get competition or something like that, and the Italians uh, have a portfolio for industry, uh, the more uh, the que one of the questions in town that is rising is uh, who will be uh, the, the representative of the liberal creed or the liberal belief uh, uh, within uh, uh, the Commission. The Swedes, probably, but again, it's an open question for the being as much as the Green Deal. Okay. okay. Um, uh before go going to the question that has been raised on I representative, um, there is a question uh, quite straightforward. Do you see any chance for the green to be part of the majority? Um, at this point, it's not actively being talked about it. Um, first of all, we have the results of the European Parliament elections, right? So centrist parties hold shift more to the right. So there's one argument that is being used is that this would go against uh, the results of the European Parliament elections, also given the, the big defeat of the Greens in the European Parliament. Second, within EPP, as we said, you know, we have this more conservative push um, weighing on von der Leyen. So um, going to the Greens would not be appreciated by certain parts of the party. Um, third, there's also this feeling um, within um, within certain parts of the EPP team von der Leyen that you cannot really trust the Greens. What 
um, they did on the migration pack, for example, was not appreciated. Um, and also that it would chase away other votes from within the centrist platform, um, for example, both within EPP, but also within Renew. So at this point, it's not actively talked about. Of course, you know, we're still in this game of, of securing the votes in the European Parliament, assuming that there would be a, a deal next week. Um, and so once, you know, once they have all the, the, the numbers, talk to a lot of the delegations and they see that they don't have the numbers, maybe can be an option again. But at this point, it really, it really doesn't feel like it. But it is an option because I, I, I understand that sometimes it is difficult to, to, to keep the all everything together, but it doesn't seem to be an option to have a majority and external support from other groups because those who are in the majority uh, don't seem to accept mm. to have a, an external support for someone who is not structural and they suppose also that those who are outside want to have a, something in back if they just support it so uh, if i understand well the situation if uh, our president wants to get uh, more vote than the majority is a matter of negotiation that is not publicly made yeah 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 okay and then we will see the result on the composition of the commission. Because if someone is supporting the candidate in the parliament, I suppose that is in order to get something back on the composition and the portfolio on the commission. Um, the actual let, policy. Yeah, <laughs> that is true. Uh, there, there was a question on if uh, Kaya Kallas is still uh, the only one possible candidate for this post. Uh, and I mean, is the daughter of uh, uh, our former uh, vice president, with whom I, I was working more than well. <laughs> but apart that, um, the concern uh, seems to be that is so keen on uh, Russian concerns uh, that the concern on the South Europe could be a bit undermined. Is this concern already been mentioned, uh, taken into account, or is just uh, something that is outside uh, the decision because she is the candidate for liberals uh, full stop no this concern has been there since uh, the very beginning uh, uh, when the of her name floating around and uh, uh, and has puzzled also uh, 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 men in town because it would be so easy for example if uh, she's very uh, and rightly so uh, 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 very focused on Russia, but uh, Russia is, for example, also in Niger, very strong, <laughs> and so uh, it would be pretty easy for her to uh, address this point uh, and uh, and uh, and uh, calm uh, those fears of those saying, how can we have uh, uh, an HRVP that is uh, uh, the minds only one issue? And uh, uh, but at the end, this comment on Niger or Africa, the presence of Russia in Africa has never materialized, uh, and uh, opening. Uh, Several questions, but still, uh, they, 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 uh, without mentioning other areas like South America, where, but still, uh, they, there are two. Uh, uh, even uh, 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 even if uh, uh, route will uh, take NATO, it's uh, uh, and uh, 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 and which would make that which mean that the liberals will have the two strongest foreign policy. A, a positions uh, a, in uh, in town, uh, despite they've lost 22 seats, uh, uh, they uh, although in two different bodies, of course, one is NATO, the other one is EU. But uh, uh, despite that, the names uh, uh, seems to be uh, still strong, mainly because this time it's impossible not to give something to the east, and uh, 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 um, among the liberals there are not many uh, so many options in the east, yeah. and. Uh, uh, you know, one of the differences compared to uh, uh, five years ago is that uh, uh, that is not uh, one of the two uh, uh, capitals, major capitals, one of the two biggest capitals in the hands of the PP, not neither Paris nor nor Berlin. But at the same time, uh, the the largest country within the PP is Poland, and uh, um, and so it's uh, uh, and these are just simple facts. And, uh, and so this time uh, again, it's just impossible that the the, the East doesn't get uh, one of the top jobs. But uh, uh, then, of course, there are jokes in town because sometimes when you ask the French, sorry, but uh, the East uh, should should get the top job, uh, the French reply, Germany is East. So, <laughs> 
kind of thing can be very relative, of course, in terms of, but these are just uh, French, uh, French officials joking, of course, not any kind of uh, official line. But, uh, uh, um, but this is just to say, uh, uh, again, it's uh, unavoidable and, uh, and uh, uh, in terms of top jobs, uh, uh, it's just too complicated to think of uh, 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 anybody else because of uh, uh, the party principle that has to match, of course, the geographical principle. And uh, uh, it's uh, someone describing uh, 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 her, uh, her name as uh, more geography than politics. Uh, and it's uh, uh, in, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, and if, if geopolitics is something, her name is, uh, is mainly because of geography rather than, than anything else. But also, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 so for the time being, uh, it, uh, then uh, it's a completely different kind of chapter whether uh, uh, w the way the HRDP will work uh, uh, in terms of uh, 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 competences on defense and so on. Uh, here uh, it's a completely different thing on the different ideas floating in town on the how that can work. But in terms of names, uh, for the time being, uh, 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 Carlos uh, remains the main one. There were also fears uh, in one member state in particular, uh, uh, and, uh, and big, that, uh, uh, um, that her oakish line on Russia could be a problem uh, if in the next uh, five years uh, uh, there would be the, the need to sit down uh, with Russia. And uh, uh, and uh, uh, but uh, this uh, uh, fear again seems to have uh, 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 almost disappeared compared to the, the fact that uh, again it's impossible not to have an Easterner in a top job and for a time being she is the easiest option for to think of uh, to sort out this issue. Thank you very much. There is a question about uh, make you great again. So what the, <laughs> <laughs> which is the impact of the uh, of the Hungarian presidency? Uh, it's quite peculiar to have a Hungarian presidency in this uh, specific moment in time. Uh, what do you think would be the the outcome? Uh, could be helpful for finding a solution. Would be neutral. Will be negative or just? Uh, I mean, so far, you know, we knew, of course, that Orban would not support von der Leyen. Um, we also know that you need QMV in the European Council. So, in this, you know, we have already written a lot about Orban versus 26 on a lot of key files, um, but on this one, it matters less just because of the, the rules. Um, also, on Monday, we didn't hear anything on Orban, basically. Was he, I mean, he was there, but <laughs> we saw him, but um, he didn't play a role. Um, in terms of the the portfolios, it's very clear that the Hungarians will not get a big portfolio this time around and that there will be a lot of sensitive discussions about what they will be able to get, um, especially after the experience now in this uh, in this mandate, of course, what will be interesting to see is what happens in the European Parliament, right? Um, in terms of the composition of the groups and if that could in any way still still change the dynamics in terms of the top jobs game. Um, maybe second point on the Hungarian presidency itself. Um, at this point, obviously, as you know, there was a lot of pressure on the Belgians to get some um, some key files over the line before the Hungarians take over on on July first, um, which has so far partly succeeded. Right, we'll have the IGC with Ukraine and Moldova next week, but there's some other files like sanctions that are still stuck um, that they still hope to to finalize before the end of the month. And then I think it's a bit operation damage control to uh, to make sure that. Because we're in this uh, unique time frame and we don't have a, le a lot of legislative files going through the council, that kind of takes the pressure off the Hungarian presidency. But you do have the element of external representation, um, which Orban will is most likely to to seize in terms of when it comes to, for example, the U.S. elections, Georgia in the future, you know, potential steps on enlargement towards wealth, Western Balkans, um, relations with China. So that is, you do feel that a lot of. Uh, officials are, are bracing for that uh, in the next six months. Uh, yeah, there is a question about what uh, Poland could uh, uh, eventually um, get for, uh, especially if they opt on the enlargement fight. Uh, <laughs> um, 
do you have any uh, hints on uh, the priority for each and every member states on the portfolio that they would wish to get in the composition of the commission? Do you have already some strong feeling or some country already asking clearly, I want to get that, whatever would be the outcome of the request, or it's totally open the composition and the portfolio of the commission so far? But, uh, on enlargement uh, uh, for uh, uh, the last month, month and a half, uh, 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 there has been, uh, uh, but uh, I mean, I've been floating that uh, Sikorsky would be interested in Poland, but also Landsberg is from Lithuania. And uh, uh, so uh, it seems that there is a big appetite uh, uh, in the East. Uh, um, then uh, I see, but uh, uh, Countries like Denmark, I see that um, what is floating around is uh, something linked to the green portfolio, but on the geopolitical side. The, uh, uh, the Finns seem very interested in the link uh, defense preparedness. Uh, 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 um, what else do you have? Spain, of course, energy, climate, for Iberia. Spain, eh? France and Italy, we discussed in terms of France, big economic Italy, portfolio. We discussed them already. Uh, 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 Transport is often mentioned for some of the Bulgaria, Croatia. Yes, for one of them. I'm thinking what else. Uh, ah, yeah, there was, uh, but this was months ago. I don't know whether there's been ever a month ago that was floating that uh, that uh, that uh, Sweden will uh, still uh, try to to uh, be the one in the Nordics uh, that will keep uh, an eye on economic portfolio trade or, or things like that. But this was months ago, so I don't know whether now this this has changed. And uh, 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 so these are. Yeah, the, I think those are the main, the main ones. Yeah, at this point. It's um, budget and admin. No, sorry. No, no budget no. and admin. <laughs> no, no, no budget admin. Uh, no, that's still unclear. I believe also budget administration is on top of our own priorities. Also, <laughs> yeah. still wants an economic portfolio, right? Yeah. Yeah, but potentially also enlargement. I think. But potentially also enlargement. Enlargement yes. is very popular file. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Who is keen on getting agriculture? Miguel is asking. We are really interested in knowing who is the next of course, commissioner. Of course, but also <laughs> at this point, you know, these were the these are the conversations we had with countries at this yeah, it's hard. I mean, we don't want to say anything that's just not accurate also. Uh, we want to, sp to to spread things that are not yeah. uh yeah, okay. it's, uh, it's something for private conversations. <laughs> <laughs> I think those are the ones we mentioned are the, the ones that is the most cleared out. Yeah. Um, if, yeah, on others, you know, if we just hear it from 1 or 2 people, you know, then it's just. It's rumors and gossip at this point, which we don't want to, which Politico would never do. <laughs> yeah, uh, there is also a, a more sensitive question uh, raised by one colleague uh, on my mobile. Uh, should France appoint again uh, Mr. Breton, Breton? How is possible that it could work again with the president after his statement? <laughs> Very strong. Yeah, it's a good question. It's a good question. The name, for weeks we've been hearing more the name of uh, Bruno Le Maire. It's uh, 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 although there is unclear the dynamic with Macron and. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, and this was before uh, what happened at the European elections. So the name we were hearing was Le Maire for a competition portfolio, uh, not Breton. And uh, 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 but uh, um, but again uh, now uh, um, with what happened in France, uh, um, uh, 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 it's all uh, 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 much more open and uh, and everything said now as. A, as a, a link with the election, so it's a, it's a, 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 things could change. And again, it's just that it, it was the name floating more more often both in in Paris, and and here in 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 Brussels. I, I like a lot the, the the game of the names. At the same time, it's pretty clear that the next five years. Are, uh, are so crucial that uh, 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 we Europeans have lost our, we are risking to lose our key military ally in the US 
we have lost the market access of uh, our key uh, market, I mean, China, our key provider of energy, Russia. We are behind in 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 in, 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 the, in, the, in the artificial intelligence on ships on electric cars. So uh, uh, the next five years are uh, uh, when you when you think of what is at stake in the next five years, uh, and then uh, uh, you see the names <laughs> floating, and uh, uh, sometimes uh, uh, there is. Uh, uh, and I'm not talking about Le Maire, eh? I'm talking in general uh, uh, on uh, uh, the, 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 the context in which this time this is happening, that again is very different from five years ago, not only because of the dynamic within the APP and the socialist, but also because this time there is so much at stake that, uh, that uh, 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 these names will have uh, a, a, an agenda that is, uh, wow, pretty frightening in terms of uh, what can, what we will have to be doing in order to make us competitive and strong. Oh, there is a question about migration. We all know that is on top of the agenda or the right side of the parliament or the parties. Uh, do you see any novelty on this respect? Any change in the policy? Uh, any role for the for the commission in this respect? Or will it be left more to the yes. member states? <laughs> Okay, listen, migration, the, the, the next three challenges are, uh, I mean, uh, uh, now there is the implementation of the migration pact uh, uh, and, uh, uh, and, uh, and then there is all this push on uh, externalization uh, 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 and then there is uh, all the issue of uh, instrumentalization. When uh, last month I interviewed the Finnish Prime Minister, it was already clear that, uh, okay, the pact is good, but at the same time on instrumentalization is not enough. So uh, 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 it's going to be anyway a tough cookie uh, uh, also for the next commission, even though uh, the migration pact has somehow worked, meaning that uh, migration has been a priority in countries like uh, Cyprus, uh, in Austria, but also in Germany, top of the debate, but it hasn't been really the top issue across the 27. So uh, uh, somehow has worked in terms of uh, not, uh, again, it was a, a, a key topic in many countries, but not, uh, not the key one across all the 27, and that was the expectation. The fear was that oh, without the migration pact, uh, migration is going to be the key topic across the 27. With migration pact, this has somehow worked. So it was a topic uh, at the top only in certain countries and only none of them, but this hasn't changed in the strength of the far right. So this was yeah. a completely another question on the link between the far right and migration. Uh, I was hearing, uh, now recently I was reading uh, on, uh, you know, that migration from, from, from member states is not exactly so appealing because if nothing happens, your uh, nothing happens, your commissioner is irrelevant. Where uh, something happens, uh, your commissioner is blamed without <laughs> having, without having uh, key powers on that file, uh, and so it's not exactly the most appealing. It's uh, 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 and there were speculations last week that. Uh, but very far-fetched scenario that uh, if Costa uh, uh, falls for the European Council and the Italians manage to have uh, one, the Letta more than Gentiloni, there uh, then at that point the Italians could lower Meloni could lower her request to the level of just migration. But I don't buy it. I think it's just a far-fetched thing. Some smoke screen uh, is plenty in these days of smoke screen, so I tend not to believe that. And uh, 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 but I haven't heard so far any country telling me I don't know whether you've heard. No. We want migration again. It usually, <laughs> not exactly the most appealing. No, no, especially because you are not able to find solutions. I mean, um, and what about defense? Is now. Uh, more or less uh, decided that we will have a commission in charge of uh, defense or is still uh, an option? All member states agree with that. Do we we'll have a budget for that? How is going to, to be organized this uh, policy in defense? I know, Jaco, that you are the expert in town about it. <laughs> Uh, I don't know that about that, but uh, what we know is that uh, it's uh, 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 okay. You know, the, the usual answer is that there is already defense commission, meaning that is uh, uh, in the portfolio of the CRDP. What defense can be done at a level of commission is uh, uh, is uh, uh, on industry. There are now we now hear. Uh, 
that uh, that portfolio could change uh, and uh, 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 could be widened the portfolio of that was now the portfolio of the Thierry Breton. But you know the fact that uh, that von der Leyen uh, campaigned so much on this defense commission, and although again it's mainly a PR move because uh, the competences are very limited and the money is basically nothing. Uh, after campaigning so much, uh, they, they, they will be. You will, you will need to have uh, something like that, and uh, 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 also to implement things that are decided, because often it's, it's plenty of things that are, you know, announced and so on, but that not much. Yeah. But of course, it's all linked to 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 then uh, the the idea of this uh, money coming and uh, 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 there won't be anything concrete now or the, the next European Council at the end of the month, later this year, but still uh, this money, uh, 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 there are talks in town uh, that uh, even if this money will arrive, uh, there is a, a kind of will uh, to keep uh, uh, the European Parliament far from it, and uh, which is uh, 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 interesting. And uh, 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 but uh, uh, so uh, more than uh, we hear uh, several ideas floating around that can be alternatives uh, to the defense bonds that are still very complicated. But uh, it's you guys that mean in the commission that next week will table the the options, uh, the, the the paper on the options, and uh, uh, um, uh, so uh, uh, something will happen. On defense, uh, uh, what is unclear is the speed, meaning that if there are no external events uh, uh, this time, uh, uh, something is expected to happen, uh, but at the EU pace, which is not exactly the quickest uh, uh, around. And uh, uh, if there is uh, an external event, then uh, things can go very quickly and external events uh, uh, like uh, uh, Trump pulling out from NATO, not just Trump being elected, and uh, uh, or uh, uh, Odessa or some other uh, uh, big chunks of Ukraine falling, or the rogue missile. We all remember that was the afternoon when that missile arrived only 200 meters far from its attackers, and that was a missile, not a rocket, so it was smart. And, uh, uh, and uh, so, uh, again, if there is one of these external events, then things can go very, very quickly, but uh, uh, um, hopefully there isn't, and not just that, uh, uh, um, uh, 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 on this kind of things, uh, it's better to act rather than react. And uh, uh, um, so it's... Uh, uh, um, uh, but you saw that also Sikorsky a few days ago said, uh, I'm not interested in the first commissioner because basically it doesn't exist much. Uh, and that is uh, really uh, 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 like that. So even Sikorsky, uh, either he reads political and agrees with us or, uh, or, <laughs> or he also downplayed the real how cool it's going to be for real the job for the time being. Yeah. Uh, there is a question who is linked to the cattle gate. Um, actually, I think that everyone expects this time the earrings to be much stronger than in the past uh, when it comes to deal with conflict of interest uh, to apply the new the new rules. Uh, do you share this uh, expectation? And uh, as a side question, what do you think will be the final outcome of this cattle gate investigation? Because at the Belgian level, things uh, seems to to be quite confused, uh, <laughs> at, at least. <laughs> yeah, I think so. it's, I think it's uh, that's indeed unclear, and uh, Belgian justice system did not show its greatest side on that uh, on that end, uh, especially the actual legal investigation, uh, not the uncovering. Um, in general, yes, you know, we expect tough hearings, which is great for us, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Um, definitely that I think what's to make a quick link. What's interesting is, is Costa, you know, the fact that, uh, he's, you know, almost a done deal, not just a front runner, you know, yes, there were still some questions and some people raised it, but no one's de facto questioning him. Um, despite. Uh, all these legal concerns and that is just, you know, if you look back to when. This news broke out and when he stepped down as prime minister, you know, majority of the town was like, okay, that option, we have to start thinking about other options. Um, and so I find it pretty fascinating that 
he's back where he where he where he was and that he will likely become the next European Council president despite all this. Yeah. We we will see the outcome. I mean uh, it's really uh, interesting for you, also for us. I mean, whenever there is a scandal, we we try to to get the positive side of the things. Uh, on conflict of interest, we have been really uh, front runner on denouncing that there was a sort of lax in in applying these rules. Um, sometimes it's not even popular for our own colleagues. Uh, whenever it comes to to have a job after the retirement, because we are criticized that we are not. Uh, helping them in finding a job. Mm -hmm. uh, I mean, a former director general actually doesn't seem to be in need to, to find a job. Uh, and we are also <laughs> really, really uh, afraid whenever the reputation and the integrity uh, of our own institution is put aside, because it's clear that if you are mm -hmm. hired by someone, it's just because you sell your own past experience. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, I mean, uh, um, Barroso Gate was the the beginning of this uh, very sad story. Uh, and we know that whenever we have this concern, we can rely on you, we can work together uh, in order to spread the fact that we are not just accepting everything uh, because we stand for our own principle, for our own reputation. Um, apparently there is a Greek, uh, there are several MEPs who were in jail <laughs> when they have been elected, uh, one Italian, uh, and there is, a, a uh, uh, Greece uh, elected MEP who is in jail in Albania. Um, uh, and the question is, do you really, do you see any relation with the best Western Balkans enlargement policy? Uh, the Greek elected MEPs is Mr. Beleri. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what what I see is just that the, all these kind of stories on the MEPs just play very well for those in the council who want to keep uh, Parliament uh, uh, far from it, uh, touching balls on the key dossiers. Uh, you see that, for example, the EPF money for uh, to Ukraine, uh, the the Parliament has no oversight because it's uh, enough budget tool, and, uh, and so all these kind of stories. I don't know the specifics of this one whether there is any kind of. Uh, 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 I, I tend to be skeptical of any kind of uh, uh, plot theory, but uh, uh, I see uh, uh, on a daily basis that the impact on the story is just full uh, uh, those uh, in the council that are very keen to keep parliament down. And uh, uh, as much as uh, the Qatar gate was uh, something that, uh, that the Nordics, uh, there was the fear that the Nordics would have used, as Barbara was saying, against Costa. But at the end, uh, the result of the Democratic Party in Italy and the socialists in, in Spain made it very difficult because now the socialists are the two largest groups are Mediterranean. And uh, um, so uh, there, uh, uh, yes, Qatar gate. Uh, uh, Will be used, uh, uh, no doubt, uh, and they can also raise the bar for uh, a certain kind of judgment. But, uh, 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 um, but at the end, again, there is this element that uh, 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 on the on the, 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 the dynamic within the, the socialist group, and uh, uh, and at the same time, there is this element that uh, we also need to see strengthen uh, uh, any kind of uh, uh, control on all these kind of things because. Uh, the, the risk of we 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 already a risk of the uh, of uh, uh, legitimacy for EU institutions with the result like this at the European elections. So it's hopefully this risk this there will be a strong awareness that uh, uh, the, the, the 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 EU is risking a lot uh, uh, also from this point of view. Yes. I mean, Stephanie is raising the question that you have already been dealing with. Um, should the ECR uh, become the third bigger, biggest group in the EP, uh, getting extra MEPs that would eventually, not not with uh, <coughs> with Fidesz and... Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we discussed this, right? That it's definitely an op a possibility and that is what they're, what they're working on now in the European Parliament. Um, and and that you know that is likely to have an influence on the top job negotiation as well at least in the power dynamics yeah uh, uh, two uh, things first of all uh, uh, um, uh, um, 
the, the fact that now there are 23 member states uh, that are part uh, of NATO means that there is a, a, an increased overlap between the two institutions. And so all this uh, idea of the uh, EU pillar within NATO uh, is, of course, becoming a, a buzzword in town uh, with different kinds of definitions and different kinds of implications. Uh, uh, there are even those uh, who imagine uh, that uh, the, the EU pillar could mean uh, to put the battle groups uh, or the rapid deployment forth that will be next year, hopefully uh, under uh, NATO control in case of need. Uh, uh, but uh, uh, others are less uh, ambitious and talk about uh, the EU pillar just in terms of interoperability. interoperability. But of course, the risk of overlapping between uh, the, 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 the two, meaning that the, the, they become the same thing uh, uh, and uh, um, it's, uh, 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 it's there so with, with less space for strategic autonomy. There was an event last week uh, on the fence where uh, this clearly came uh, out uh, in the discussion this fear that uh, uh, because of the fact that the two institutions tend to overlap more and more, strategic autonomy will uh, 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 will uh, not be so key anymore. But two things. First of all, uh, recently uh, uh, we saw Stoltenberg on Monday, I believe it was, on Friday, going on the records warning on the French elections, and I don't personally remember a NATO Secretary General, at least in the, ten, the last 10, 15 years, uh, intervening on the result of the uh, elections. Because again, the first obstacle is that uh, if uh, Le Pen wins, uh, uh, if Bardella wins, uh, uh, they made now clear that uh, they will withdraw from the, the, the NATO strategic command only after Ukraine is sorted, which was a good sign. Uh, and that really means that they are softer on that. But at the same time, it's, uh, 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 it's still creating uh, 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 huge fears for uh, what are going to be the implications for the EU within NATO. We had a story last uh, weekend, I believe. No, no, it was uh, on Thursday. Uh, on the, 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 we had a colleague on the plane uh, where there were some uh, US officials uh, coming to Brussels for the NATO ministerial. Uh, and and again, they were on the records on how afraid they are for what can happen in France. But then, of course, there are external events and uh, that can trigger completely different scenarios. And so if, if Trump is elected and, uh, uh, and uh, 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 pulls out from NATO, strategic autonomy becomes a kind of necessity, meaning that that uh, uh, that uh, 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 then the Europeans have to be able to 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 do things on their own, and uh, and this could be uh, uh, again it could be one of these uh, things that happens uh, that takes uh, 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 again external events will shape uh, half of this discussion, and uh, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, so uh, 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 the more the UN to become the same thing, the more uh, uh, in the uh, Become the same thing. The more overlap, the more there is a discussion on what we do with strategic autonomy. But the 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 answer will be mainly linked to uh, external events. So, um, so the question was on cohesion policy and the, how how the president will kind of take that towards her. Um, and I think also there to take a step back will be, you know, it's clear that we'll be writing a lot. We already did, but we'll still be writing a lot more on the big MFF fights in the coming years. And obviously cohesion will be, will be a key part of that. The push that you have seen on making cohesion policy more conditional, um, as we had with next gen EU is very, very strong, both from certain member states as from von der Leyen. Um, obviously the pushback is also very strong. Um, so at this point, it doesn't really, it's unclear how it will play out, but um, we expect to write a lot on um, on this topic, and um, it also fits with the the general ambition of von der Leyen and her team to have more control over these instruments and over these policies um, in order to to get their policy uh, get their policy out there towards towards the member states. I don't know if you have anything to add. I, I go to the question, how come our Secretary General can be among the top job to be shared 
while is supposed to be appointed after a transparent and clear appointing procedure, not with a political decision, because we have seen that uh, uh, the sharing of the section of the commission is part of the bar again, uh, and is a provo provocative question raised by colleagues, uh, because it's not something and someone to be appointed on political game. It's just a selection procedure that is supposed to be open to anyone and transparent. Is it true that it's a part of the bar game? Do you hear something about it? <laughs> this is the part where we don't know how much we can say. Uh, this is a complicated to answer in this forum. Uh, it's uh, uh, yes, of course. Uh, let me try to be. Uh, 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 yes, of course. Uh, there are many speculations in town on both uh, the the secgens, uh, but it's also part of. Uh, uh, I mean, not the first time. This is not a novelty. Uh, also, last time uh, there were speculations on uh, 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 on that uh, and. Uh, uh, and uh, uh, on the implications that could have uh, for uh, both the jobs. Uh, 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 so it's plenty of uh, rumors, but I wouldn't spread them uh, right now. Um, that they are not, uh, we would love to discuss that, but maybe not in this order. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yes. No problem. And uh, uh, another question. Uh, is there any chance that uh, President Metsola could stay for all the five years or the sharing of the presidency of the parliament, uh, a part of the provocative uh, proposal by the APP, could stand and fly? I mean, I think there is a small chance that she could stay for five years. At the same time, you know, like you said, it's one of the things that were being floated as is this what? The EPP wants at the same time, as far as we know, it's not per se something that Metzler herself would want, um, given that she might go back to Malta. Um, and so it's very clear that the socialists have the second half of the of the Europe mandate of the European Parliament. So it looks very unlikely at this point, but in these top jobs games, never say never. Mesla is one of the most popular uh, uh, figures in town. Uh, it's uh, she is widely uh, liked uh, and uh, uh, appreciated. It's uh, pretty astonishing uh, 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 the level of uh, consensus uh, that uh, uh, she has, uh, even among officials and diplomats that usually are not so honey. And uh, 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 there are expectations that once she leaves uh, the, the parliament, she will run in uh, uh, domestic politics. And uh, um, at that point, she will have that executive experience that uh, 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 now many, when the name of Metzler was floating for the commission, were saying, no, she cannot because she has never been a minister or a prime minister. In uh, in uh, in uh, five years' time, uh, the the answer to this question can be very different. Okay, so you know already the candidate for the next <laughs> no, commission. No, the no, no, I just said that the reply to this question in five years can be different. Then all the rest, we don't know it. <laughs> okay, and uh, uh, finally, uh, do you think that the negotiation on the next MFF, uh, it's part of our. Uh, concerns uh, could be different on not saving money at any cost, but perhaps providing Europe for more uh, budget for, uh, for the priorities uh, to go for uh, something more than just uh, everyone keeping its own money in his pocket, uh, get my money back seems to be the <clears throat> the share message. Do you see any impetus on uh, reinforcing policies or the results of the election will more pledge in everyone keeping? You mean to widen the budget? You mean to widen the budget yeah. to reinforce the budget. policies? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I mean, we're still at the starting point of this, right? You, so you see a lot of opening salvos, and you do hear a lot of conversation about exactly that. You know the all the things that we have to do and that we want to do in terms of green transition, defense, et cetera, we will need to have more money to do exactly that. Even Dombrovsky said this on the record. Um, at the same time, you also see, for example, the Netherlands and their new um, their new government who say that not just do they not want to give more, they want to give less. Um, and uh, we still, we have the French elections that we talk about. We will have elections in Austria, uh, another frugal country. Um, so it will be a very, very difficult discussion 
also, as you mentioned, taking into account the the results of the European Parliament elections that we just had, um, it seems like it was it, were, it already looked very difficult beforehand, and it looks even more difficult now. And by the time the actual negotiations will start, it will probably be even more difficult. Um, so yeah, good luck to uh, whoever in DG budget is in this call. <laughs> Let us know oh, yeah. how you will solve that conundrum. We're very interested. <laughs> and do you see any room for a revision of treaties in order to eventually go more for majority decision instead of a power of veto of any member states? Is something that you could expect in the next few years? We would be too complicated that we better try to avoid it. We avoid it. The second one. No, okay. but just, uh, the, every time you ask this question, you get the same reply. It's just a Pandora box, uh, and it went so badly with the conference, uh, mm. the convention. Sorry, that uh, that uh, that. Uh, we even stopped asking the question. We even stopped asking the question because we get every time the same kind of reply, and uh, and uh, uh, um, and so no, it's. Uh, but that's the reason why there are all these rumors about these uh, these uh, four executive vice presidents. Because of course the the the, the uh, uh, one of the points that without changing the treaties uh, it, it would be clear is that the Commission next time has to work differently in terms of collegiality. So there there must be this continuity somewhere, and uh, it cannot go ahead in this way. And uh, I remember there was a core repair months ago where uh, there was a discussion also on the lack of implementation and so on and so it's uh, 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 and uh, uh, and so it's uh, there will be uh, uh, part of the discontinuity uh, uh, um, rather than changing the treaties uh, 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 will be probably in this kind of uh, in this kind of two speed commission that seems more practical and feasible than uh, 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 than uh, uh, anything else. Yeah. And, I mean, we rely on you whenever you meet someone who wants to to reform the staff regulations to answer in the same way. Don't open the box of Pandora. <laughs> Let's keep this poor civil servant without any new reform. <laughs> we have already made so many damages. The attractiveness of the civil servant is so low that you better avoid to open again the staff regulation. Uh, I'm kidding, but that, not really, uh, because I mean the results of the two reform has been that now the same countries that were responsible for the reform are struggling for finding their own candidates. Uh, we were there in order to announce this result, but they, they didn't listen. And now we come with a competition per nationality in the parliament and a soft law in the commission of the institution. Uh, and it's a bit uh, pity that we, we, we cannot, we can long, we cannot longer attract the best. But I hear uh, Lobby is very candidate. happy about these reforms. <laughs> exactly, exactly. I think that we come at the end of this uh, very fruitful and uh, memorable meeting. I think this is the first time that we had a, such a, a clear and open conversation. Uh, I hope that we can also rely on you for having a new meeting so when the file will be uh, more mature, when the decision will be taken in order to have your own assessment of any decision, if the decision are taken before the end of the month, and then with the parliament. Uh, but work closely with you, I mean, the whole the journalists that can uh, support our own way to see the civil service uh, seems to be really helpful. Again, uh, I recall that whenever we have a concern, the idea that things can be published in Politico is the, <laughs> the best protection for, for for making the right decision at the right time. Okay. Respect and get in touch again. And I thank you very much. I don't know if you thank want you. to add something as a conclusion, but really glad to work again and to, to meet you again in the, in the near future. No, maybe just to, yeah, to thank you as well for the opportunity and, you know, obviously would be very open to uh, to meeting anyone in person because it always allows for a different conversation um, than this one. So don't hesitate to get in touch. We're relatively easy to find online. So. And not far. We see you yeah. over here. <laughs> <laughs> but we are under the obligation of self regulation. Of course. We are the reserve. Of course. Of course. Thank, you. thank you so much. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, let's go. You see so many colleagues in the chat. Thank you. Bye-bye. <laughs>